Hey everyone, so in the last video you saw me wiring up the machine with the power supply and all the electronics, the controller and, and everything and got the whole thing moving using um, using the Arduino which is running Gerbil and control from my computer. So that was pretty nice bit of progress, it was really, really satisfying for me to build all that and wire it up and have it work, but it still only controls just one axis. And as I mentioned at the end of the last video, the y-axis alone moving back and forth doesn't really make much of a CNC machine. So next part I have to make is the x-axis. So I got some parts that arrived and basically I can show you what I'm going to be designing. The main part of the x-axis is going to be this uh, linear rail which is going to mount along here and it'll slide back and forward. Uh, onto that we'll bolt this piece of um, offcut of 2020 or 2040 extrusion from the other bits and that will run along here like this and the z-axis will move up and down along that. Um, that's about it uh, for the for this first part anyway, that's the first mechanical part that has to happen so I need to drill some holes in this to be able to mount it onto that and I have to disassemble the gantry to be able to put all the holes through here to securely mount the rail onto it. Um, so that's the first part I'm going to do anyway and just get that bit there so that I can move it along by hand uh, and then the main part is going to be of like well the main kind of complicated bit that I'm still not certain on in my head is how exactly I'm going to mount the motor um, so it's the same motor as the two that drum, drive the y-axis so I need to figure out a nice way of mounting it maybe like this and then you know it's going to run on a belt which is going to be fixed on either end and we'll pull the thing side to side maybe it mounts up here or something I need to figure out what the best orientation for the whole thing is um, once I have that figured out I'll then be 3D printing pieces that will mount that will secure onto that um, V slot maybe something like this and we'll then pull the whole thing side to side along that rail so first thing I'm going to do though is I'm going to disassemble this bring all these pieces out to the shed and I'm going to start um, drilling, tapping holes, all that sort of stuff. So you can watch that next. This assemblage of parts you see in front of you is the motor mount and the belt guides for the x-axis of our milling machine and I'm going to assemble them now.
And there we have it. That is the fully assembled uh, motor mount and belt guide. So I'm going to do a little demonstration about how this is intended to work. So we get a piece of belt here and then we can feed it through the mechanism like so. So now the belt will be under tension and be mounted hard to the frame of the machine. And then you can see that as I pull on that belt, the belt, the little rollers, little bearings there, the belt guides, um, keep tension on the belt on the pulley and it can move along. So obviously in this example, the belt is moving and the uh, the motor is the motor is spinning and the, but the thing is the, uh, the mount is staying stationary. So it'll be the opposite way around. When it's mounted onto the machine, as you can see, you'll see the belt will remain stationary. The motor will spin and that will move the entire uh, x-axis right and left along the length of the gantry. So pretty happy with that. Um, next part I'm going to, I haven't showed you yet, but I did mount the rail onto the gantry uh, and added the z-axis uh, support piece, which is what this bolts onto to move us along. So I'm going to install it onto the frame there uh, and give you guys a better look at that part. Okay, so this is the back of the machine. Uh, so the rail is mounted along here. You can't see it in this shot. Um, and this is what will be the um, z-axis. So this moves nicely just along here, side to side. So the motor support is gonna mount on here and then the belt's gonna run along here and the, the drive is gonna move it side to side like that. So I'll show you how this attaches. It's a little tricky to get in place. So I can set the height to kind of wherever I want it to. Just has to not touch the top of the gantry and then I can pinch it up with these T-nuts. There's a little bit of adjustment in this. Um, slightly on purpose, slightly not, slightly forced because um, what I decided I'd make the whole thing the same width all the way along. Of course, this is only 40 mils wide. The motor is more like 42 mils wide. So it's not quite uh, like a snug fit on there, but I should I can adjust the screws on either side to like get it pretty close, um, which is okay. Okay, so there we have it. That is how our axis will move so again we can get our belt in there to demonstrate okay so it'll be something like this now i haven't figured out exactly how i'm going to clamp the belt in place yet and uh, that's the next little bit that i have to figure out but that's essentially how it'll move when it'll, it'll pull itself along there um, yeah, so that's that's about that. Uh, so yeah, I gotta figure out uh, just how to clamp these uh, belts in place. I'll probably 3D print something that'll utilize T-nuts and little jaws to pinch down here so that I can pinch the belt at either end. Again, it'll probably it'll have the same problem that uh, the Y-axis has with the belt tension. It's sort of going to be manual for now because I'm not gonna have like a nice little screw thing to to be able to finally adjust it later. Well, I, I will at some point, I won't for the first version. So uh, it'll just be little clamps that you'll just have to manually sort of tension. Um, nice thing though for this, like the, these things are a pain because you have to tension them both together and they should be both in equal tension. Whereas I only have one belt here. So I can just make it a tension that works um, for the setup. Okay, so I'm gonna go design these print them, fit them. And then the next thing you guys should see is hopefully this will be wired into the controller and I'll be able to move the X and the Y axis of the machine, which will be awesome. All right, we've made some really good progress here. So you can see we've got our rail mounted on our X axis. We have some end stops put in. We've got our motor mounted on the support and you'll notice we now have a little pen holder stuck on the front of it. Um, so effectively now we've got a pen plotter. So it's the, the first useful practical thing that this machine can actually do is be a pen plotter. Um, 
That said, it is basically drawing like an Etch-a-Sketch because I can't lift the pen up at all, so it just draws connected lines the whole time. Uh, so again, not super useful, but this will serve a purpose for me. So in I've done some basic calibration of the machine, and in doing that, uh, I've set the steps per millimeter for both the Y and the X axis. Now, I've done that kind of quite roughly by rotating the motor, by hand marking positions on the frame and like measuring the offsets as I've rotated the motor like through one full revolution and such. So I don't really know if it's very accurate. So what I've figured is I can use the pen, pop it down on the paper and then tell it the machine to move certain uh, amounts in the X and Y um, axis and then I can measure the lines that are drawn and um, which will let me do a couple of things I can check the distance for like the steps per millimeter and then I can also check say if I was to draw a right angle I can see um, how square it can draw um, so I'm gonna do that now and do a couple of tests uh, draw some shapes and yeah read, read some numbers off of them and, and see how well this is set up and then I can hopefully use that information to tweak some of the settings so that I can get it a little bit more accurate Hey, that's not too bad. I mean, it looks like it sort of drew a right angle triangle. <laughs> um, not perfect, but I mean, it didn't do something absolutely crazy, which is good. You can see it didn't quite come back exactly. But then there's also, you notice that when it started moving along the Y axis, the pen kind of dragged because this surface, I guess, has um, like the grain is going that way, so it was sort of dragging across the grain, I guess. Well, that's what it felt like when it was when it was moving. I could hear the noise, and then here it appears to this kind of a little weird little bump as it started moving in the diagonal direction. But we can measure and see what we got. So I told it to move forty millimeters in each direction. And so if I stick my ruler down, wow. <laughs> That's almost bang on well, from from this perspective, not super accurate, but geez, that's <laughs> that's really that's that's really good. I'm surprised at that. The x axis is yeah, the x axis is a bit off. So that was the y axis is oh no, sorry, that was the x axis, pretty good. Um, this is the y axis. Looks like it's about mm, two millimeters, one and a half millimeters off. Now. I'm not certain if that's again if that's to do with the with the the pen rubbing. So what I might do is I might reposition it and do like a test back the way, so that it's kind of dra so instead of pushing against the grain, it's sort of dragging along and see does that make any difference um, to that Y movement. But it possibly is slightly off, so I'm gonna test that now. So that looks a bit better. I think that's probably actually mm, still could be about a millimeter off, maybe. Hard to tell. See, because at the very end there, I just realized this pen mount wiggles a little bit back and forth. So it very could very well be end up being, you know, a millimeter or so off. But that measurement looks a bit better. This little bit at the end is because I wiggled the pen as I was lifting it up, and as I saw, it did stop sort of at the very end of that uh, where the line starts to thin out there which off that ruler looks like it's about 40 millimeters so actually I thought I'd have to do a load of calibration I thought these measurements would be way off but seems like they're not too bad um, so that's good nice draw some more funny shapes and see what happens <laughs>
Well, okay, so I definitely think that that... So uh, it started there, and I moved it down the exact amount, and I moved it over, and then I've tried to move it up, and it seems to have just fallen short. So I think that might be... Yeah, see, like, if I just... You can see the way the pen has moved, so... It, I think that actually is accurate. Uh, well, accurate enough for this kind of little fun bit of calibration that I'm doing, so pretty happy with that. <laughs> uh, that so satisfying. Um, okay, uh, I think that's going to be it for this video. Um, there's still a lot of work to do. Uh, I haven't quite finished the x-axis parts. So I haven't drilled all these holes. It's still only held on by three screws. So I need to drill more holes, put more screws in. So I have to break all this back down again to do that. Uh, and then this piece, I'm not very happy with it. You might notice that there's only three screws holding it on because I kind of rushed uh, drilling the holes and didn't do it very well. So um, this isn't very solidly attached it's a bit a little bit wonky as well so I'm going to probably just reuse this piece I'm just going to flip it around and drill the whole whole pattern in the top and do it better this time um so yeah that's that's about it for this the next part I have to do I have to do all that obviously and then the next big mechanical part that I have to do is I have to um build out the uh, the y the z axis so that's going to probably be the most amount of kind of interconnected parts in, in this whole thing um so yeah i have to figure out the design for that i gotta build it a lot of 3d printing um a lot of figuring stuff out and once that's done i suppose the, the only real bits to do then are i need to start working on things like the limit switches i need to work on like the homing for the machine all that sort of stuff um so that it can be more autonomous I'll probably still do all of that most of that with just a pen so it'll be a pen mounted onto the the z-axis just because it's low risk <laughs> if i start crashing it or messing into things i don't have a spinning spindle of death there ready to take my face off um so yeah uh that's it for now um thanks for watching guys um as always if you liked this video remember to share it like it and um, subscribe to the channel and uh, if you want to support the work that I'm doing, you can find a link in the description to my Patreon. Um, all the money that's donated there will go towards making bigger and better projects in the future. Thanks for watching, guys.